Hi guys. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I had to put on my reaching hat. Hear me out. 38-year-old Holly Suzanne Cordier disappeared October 6th after taking a shuttle bus into the park. A mother is rescued after being lost for nearly two weeks in Zion National Park. It's very confusing. A sheriff sergeant says there are discrepancies and questions that do not add up. She couldn't even open her mouth to drink, and she couldn't even talk. Not having water for three days, you're in big trouble. Thank you for clicking. Today I want to talk about the Holly Cordier or Cordier Cartier case um, that was French. <laughs> it started as a missing persons case and then it quickly spiraled into a conspiracy theory. As usual here on my channel, I'm going to give you guys the facts. We're going to go over the theories and then you can decide for yourself. Before I begin, you guys know I have to give my thanks to my returning subscribers, old and new. Thank you guys so much for your support, for everything that you do, even talking about me to other channels. That's really appreciated and hopefully something special is coming soon. And some of you have been asking me for like more personal content. So I started an Instagram. It's just my name, Noor Jasmine. Me, I think Nor Jasmine 7. If you care, if you don't, whatever, moving on. And if you are new here, <laughs> this is me. I wear a tinfoil hat. That one was different, <laughs> different today. I wear a tinfoil hat and I talk about true crime and conspiracies, particularly where the two intersect. Okay. And this case, it started as it looked like it could be a true crime case. And that's why I was keeping my eye on it. I wanted to see like what was gonna happen. And then it was like, oh, oh okay, maybe it's not true crime. It's fine, everything's fine. And then it was like, wait, wait a minute. What, what, you, you know what I mean? Um, I don't even know what I mean. So let's just get into it, okay? <laughs> so the story starts on October 8th, 2020. At this point, Holly had been missing for two days. She was reported missing by her roommate. Holly's last known location was at the Zion National Park in Utah. Holly's from California. Her last known location was at the shuttle bus by the grotto, which is this area like there's like a parking lot near the trailhead and she was dropped off there and nobody had seen her since. And the reason why they even know that she was there was not because she told anybody, although that's a little controversial, we'll get into it, but the reason why they know this is because of her credit card, because she did not take her cell phone. She actually left her cell phone in California to go hiking in Utah. Weird, right? I know. This was around 1.30 p.m. on October 6th. 2020 and she was reported missing two days later on October 8th. Now, other than leaving her phone, she seems to not have brought food or water either. According to this article that I found, she is said to have only had a jacket, a hat, a tank top, hiking boots, a backpack, sweatshirt, blanket, and a hammock with her. As the search was going on, towards the tail end of the search on October 15th is when Holly's family started a GoFundMe. Specifically, her sister Jamie started a GoFundMe. It was uh, several days after Holly had been missing, about a week or so. The GoFundMe was to quote, cover the costs of her search and possible aftercare when she is found. Remember what I just said, when she is found, because plays later, but just remember it for now. $12,010, that's how much the GoFundMe made. Of course, this is all well, all good, not a big deal. People go missing, people start GoFundMes, nothing suspicious right now. The family had also started its own independent search party group thing. There was a website. They had asked for donations for supplies like color printers, flashlights, things like that. And then they also wanted manpower. And of course they have the GoFundMe as well. So Holly's daughter became the unofficial like spokesperson for her, the search. She was 19 years old. She was a college student. She had left school to go and be the face of the search to try to find her mother. There was an article that I found that was written when Holly was still missing, but before she was found, it says, this group has no affiliation with Zion National Park and is separately organized by the family, but will be encouraging strict adherence to the park's rules, including safety with COVID-19 and cyanobacteria. Now, 
probably said that wrong, but I want you to remember that before Holly was found, an article states that they were aware of the bacteria in the water and that they were complying with safety requirements around that issue. Then on October 13, so by this time Holly had been missing for a little less than a week, the chief ranger came out and he said that they were optimistic because there was mild weather and it appears as though they knew that she had supplies with her, although they didn't think she had food or water with her and that's going to factor in later but they had hoped that she had you know her supplies and that she had found a water source and <clears throat> with the mild weather hopefully she could survive until she was found so things were looking good at this time and then before you know it somebody had spotted holly and they had alerted the rangers and they found her that holly was found after two hikers spotted a hammock she had strung up and called in a tip. So on October 18th, so it's been 12 days since she went missing, Holly was found alive and unharmed near the Virgin River and she was found just half a mile from where she was last seen, the trailhead where she was dropped off, remember the shuttle bus? Yeah, she was only half a mile away from that area when she was found she looked emaciated and they said that she had been keeping track of how many days she was missing with a sharpie on a piece of wood or a tree this is where the controversy comes in because at this point the stories diverge you've got the official story from the rangers and the police and all that and then you've got the family saying what happened we we till at the time of me filming this we have not heard from holly we never had heard from holly everything we're getting from that side is what the family's saying this is the official story from the rangers and the people who found her they said that they found holly alive and that she needed minimal assistance and that she was left to go home with her family there was no ambulance called or anything like that but then when the family was interviewed by media their account was different the first thing they said was that holly was in bad shape she had a concussion and she couldn't move she could barely speak she was bruised very badly she went without food the entire time and drank river water this is what the family said that holly told them about what happened that she was fasting she was on some spiritual journey and she was fasting and she went in there so she hadn't eaten for two days before she even showed up at the park then she took a long strenuous hike and she was very very exhausted after that hike and she had her hammock set up and she went to sit on the hammock after the hike and somehow like swung back hit a sharp point of uh the tree and so after that happened she was very disoriented and she kind of like didn't know where she was and basically was at that state concussed until she was found and then this is the quote that really started all the controversy hold on just one second this started a lot of the controversy sorry my do dogs are moving around she said she was very disoriented as a result so this is talking about the head injury and thankfully ended up near a water source a riverbed she thought her best chance of survival was to stay next to a water source remember this water source thing because that's going to be a huge part of this excuse me hello diesel thank you appreciate it how dare they so her sister called it a miracle and she said i think god got her through this i truly believe there's no reason she should be alive it doesn't make sense she didn't have the proper gear and she didn't have food or water. So this lack of gear and food and water is what caused a lot of suspicion among law enforcement as well as the water source thing. Because after the family made these statements, law enforcement in a press conference made more statements saying that basically their family story does not add up. Enter into the scene, Sergeant Daryl Cashin or Cation, I'm not sure. I'm going to call him Sergeant Darrell. Sergeant Darrell is the Utah's Washington County Sheriff Search and Rescue Sergeant. He said, and I quote, the statements that the family is giving and the statements that the park is giving don't add up. Those are the types of questions I think everybody has. I think the place where that question can be answered is with her. 
Let's take each discrepancy and go through it. So the first discrepancy is the water source, right? You know, her daughter said that thankfully she got to a water source. We wanted her to get to a water source. We know that she didn't have water with her. We also know that she was fasting before she even went camping. So what's that about? Well, the reason why this water source story didn't seem believable according to Sergeant Daryl is because the water source that she was next to, the Virgin River, is actually toxic. The sergeant says the Virgin River, which runs through the park, contains high levels of toxic bacteria. Right, so remember when I told you guys earlier to remember the cyanobacteria thing and how the article said that the family knew about this bacteria? So why would that river be considered a water source, right, if they know that it has bacteria and everybody knows their bacteria. There are even signs that are posted around there that say that this water is not potable drinking water. On top of that, Sergeant Darrell said, if she had been drinking that water, unless she had some really high immune system, she would have been very, very ill and probably unable to come out on her own. She either took a lot of water with her or had another clean water source that was near here but the Virgin River is not that source. And on the other hand, he said that without water, she would not have survived past two or three days because that's what they generally say about humans is you can go like a month without food, but you can only go a few days without water. So if she didn't have water and the Virgin River was toxic, what does the family mean when they're saying water source? Adding to this whole thing about the water is that Holly's sister was at these briefings with the search and rescue team and she was receiving updates about the search and also it says at each meeting the search and rescue teams would say again that Holly did not have any food and water. So how did she survive without the water? How did she survive without the water, right? That's a big question. Once the sergeant said that, there was like this huge thing. Everybody was like, wait, what is going on? What do you mean? Da, 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 da. And so uh, the actual sheriff's department had to come out and make a, a statement based on what detective, I mean, sorry, sergeant uh, Daryl had said. And this is what they said. They stood by him. They said that these inconsistencies raised some questions as to the authenticity of the events as reported to law enforcement. They added that the department stands behind Dr. I mean, Dr. Uh, Sergeant Daryl's observations and statements. Second discrepancy is how injured was Holly really? Sergeant Daryl commented on that as well. He said, quote, if we had found somebody in that condition with that kind of severe head injury, we would have at minimum called for a transport agency to check her out. The fact that that didn't happen tells me that they did not find any significant injury to her that would have prompted them to do that. Physically, she seemed to be in a condition that did not warrant an ambulance and they felt was comfortable to, and they felt was comfortable to release her to her family to address. I don't know why it's like that, but I'm just reading the quote. Was she that bad or was she not? This doesn't make sense, he said. And the third and final comment that Sergeant Darrell made was he didn't outright say it at all, but he was alluding to it and a lot of the news media picked up on that because it seemed like he was suggesting that Holly did not want to be found and just listen. He said that there was some question of her decision making regarding her trip to the park. He said that she left California in the middle of the night and did not tell her family where she was going. Quote, if she's by the Virgin River, she's down in the valley, not in the back country up in the plateaus and the peaks. She's in that main part of the canyon, which always has thousands of people walking up and down those trails. I'm sure people walk by yelling for her. He said that the search and rescue teams, quote, went above and beyond. They even had GPS tracks of every trail, every part of the backcountry, and every valley they searched. They had everything about Holly they possibly could have gotten to give an indication of what her behavior was like and where she might have gone. Understand, there's a lot of country up there. If you go off trail, it would be virtually impossible to find somebody unless they want to be found. He also noted that the area where Holly was found near the Virgin River was very popular with the park visitors and he kind of was suggesting like how 
if she was there the whole time and hit her head and couldn't really walk past the, that area, how did she go missing for 10 days when there was a lot of traffic in that area in those 10 days? Seeming to suggest that she was, was like, what, hiding? And then after a certain point decided to come out and be found. And that doesn't make sense unless this was all a scheme that she had sort of faked her disappearance so that the family could do a GoFundMe and that she kind of like was hiding from people which is crazy and then she you know once they reached a certain amount of money then she was like visible to be found and the family could cash in on that money and blah blah that's the theory right let's talk about it there was an article that was talking about the things that people were saying about it and they mentioned two um comments from people and one says the story makes no sense and simply can't be true in its entirety. I have honestly thought of an abduction or a concerted GoFundMe scam in collaboration with her daughter who seems to be feeding untruths to the media slash public. And then other people are questioning the timing of the GoFundMe saying, after reading this article, it strengthens our beliefs that this woman and her daughter orchestrated this quote, plan to get lost then found in her attempt to make some money as she is doing so from her GoFundMe that was conveniently created the minute that she was found. So according to the GoFundMe page, it was created on October 15 and Holly was found on October 18th and the GoFundMe said that it was to help with the search effort efforts but also to help with the medical expenses when she is found. Remember I told you about that? So even though she was rescued on October 18th, the GoFundMe was still ongoing because remember they said that they wanted it for the medical cares after. On October 22nd, Holly's sister made a post, an update on the GoFundMe page and this is what she said. Holly has suffered from mental health issues in the past and went on her hike not in the best frame of mind. She did not intend to become injured or so weak on her journey, nor did she intend for her trip to become a search and rescue effort. If Holly was not found when she was, she would have died. Sorry, why did I say doubt? In that GoFundMe update on October 22nd that the sister made, she also linked um, her interview with media explaining some of the inconsistencies that people were bringing up and that the sergeant had brought up and everything like that. And that's what I want to tell you, like their rebuttal to these accusations. The first thing that she wanted to make clear was how the money from the GoFundMe was going to be spent. And this is what she said. She did a little outline. She said, funds will be used to reimburse the family and friends cost in searching for Holly, such as hotel rooms, equipment purchase to look for Holly, car rentals, and the food for the search parties, as well as a separate bank account will be opened up to reimburse these individuals. And then the remainder of these donations will be used to cover the medical care applied to Holly during her hospital stay, as well as therapy costs moving forward. So in the interviews that she had linked in the GoFundMe, she says a lot of things and that's what I want to talk about. In their explanations as well, there are some inconsistencies and now I don't know if this is because they're lying or because it's three different people with three different perspectives and you know, on the situation and like relationships with Holly. So like you've got her sister, her other sister and her daughter and that there's like a different dynamic in each of those relationships. So the fact that her sister and her daughter claimed that they knew she was going to Zion. And then the other sister says that she didn't know and that Holly didn't say anything about it. That kind of could be explained away in the sense of like, well, maybe she just didn't tell one sister and told the other one. You know what I mean? They were talking about her mental health. And this is also a discrepancy because the daughter says that her mother was feeling a little bit adrift and lost because she had lost her job as a nanny during the pandemic. And so she kind of like didn't really know where her life was going, was going through something. And so she had decided since she had this free time, she was going to go and visit all the different national parks in the country. The daughter also says that her and her mom had gone to Zion and hiked a month or so before in September and that she knew that her mom was going to go back 
and hike again. So the one sister who didn't know that Holly was going to Zion, she said, I really think she had a mental breakdown and was not in the right state of mind when she decided to take this journey and not tell people where she was going. The daughter said that she knew and the sister said that Holly had actually come to stay with her a few days before she went on this hiking trip and that she was fasting then because she didn't eat and that she kind of gave her this long hug and told her like I'll see you in a while and the sister felt it was weird because she understood from Holly that she was only going to hike for a day or two and that she was going to continue her fast while she was hiking already having been fasted for two days, so she's gonna fast for like four days, half of which is in the woods in the middle of nowhere, which is also strange, and that her sister knew that was happening because Holly did this often. Holly was very spiritual. She was into the like the new age kind of thing. She said that basically Holly was known to fast and was a free spirit and did these spontaneous things, so her saying she was going to go hiking for two days and fast was not like super out of the ordinary for Holly, according to her sister. She was a free spirit and, you know, she loved adventure. So, after the sergeant had come out and said all this about the GoFundMe and the family had come out and kind of said their version of events, that sheriff's office ended up getting bombarded with tips of people saying that this was a GoFundMe scam. So the sheriff's office came out, they made a statement, they said, Numerous tips have been received indicating the incident was possibly conceived and carried out as part of a plan to fraudulently generate money to a GoFundMe account for Cordier's recovery. In this same statement, the sheriff's office did say, quote, no evidence to support the theory that the incident was committed intentionally as an effort to achieve final gain has been found at this time. Keep in mind, the investigation as of me filming this, I'm filming this on the 20th. Yeah, it's the October 20th and it's 8 p.m. Okay, as of now, the investigation is still open and they haven't said anything in addition to what I just read to you. As of now, Holly Cordier is the subject of a criminal probe. Okay, which is crazy if she's totally innocent because I cannot imagine having a mental break going into the woods, being starved of food and water and concussion, all this stuff for 12 days, only to get out to the whole country being like, you're a liar, you're a scammer, and then you're like trying to get help, and then you find out there's a criminal investigation into you as like a scammer, scamming, like I can't, if she is innocent and the whole thing is true and just the craziest story ever, that really sucks for Holly and I feel really, really bad. Let's keep going. The family started talking to media again, and this time they were not very happy, and they explained a lot more. So the first thing people wanted to know was, why didn't she take her phone with her? And her daughter actually answered, and this is what the daughter said. She did not know why her mom didn't take her phone, but she did say that when they went hiking together in that same park a month earlier, they left their phone behind, and the reason why they left their phones behind is because they didn't want them to get damaged. I don't know how I feel about that particular statement. It does strike me as a little bit odd, but that's what she said. Regarding the whole poison water thing and that the family said that she was near a water source, the sister clarified and this is what she said. She said that, uh, Holly was very well aware of the toxins in the river. There was a statement made that she said she had set up camp because she wanted to stay close to the river. But we were never implying that she drank the water. They said that she just put the water in her mouth to wet her mouth because her mouth was so dry and that she would spit out the water. And that her daughter saying that she wanted a water source and thankfully she found a water source didn't imply that she drank the water. Then when the sister was confronted with, well, what about how hurt was Holly really? You said that she was disoriented and she couldn't walk and all this, but the rescue people are saying that she was totally fine. This is what her sister said regarding that. She said, when you think you're going to die and you see a ranger, she said she literally got like giddy inside because she knew she was going to see her daughter and her family. So you definitely have some sort of adrenaline working for you at that point. 
And also she said that even though Holly didn't have assistance walking, that a ranger was walking behind Holly and then the sister was in front and Holly was like in between them walking in case she fell. And she says that the rangers knew and witnessed Holly uh, standing and stopping every five feet to like take a break because she was so, you know, winded or tired or exhausted or dehydrated or what have you. Then the sister was asked, okay, if she was that bad and she couldn't walk and she had to take all these breaks, why didn't she go in an ambulance? Why didn't she get medical treatment on scene? How come she was able to just like leave with the family? She said that she was very scared and traumatized and she wanted to leave the park in my car with me and my husband and her daughter. And we drove her straight to the emergency room. Things have just been twisted. Okay, so she didn't drink the water, right? She just put it in her mouth to wet her mouth. How did she survive 12 days without water? And the sister said that since Holly had had experience with fasting before, she kind of was able to tolerate, I guess, that level of fasting, if you will. They also said that, you know, she couldn't even open her mouth, she couldn't speak, and that Holly had actually seen a person when she was missing and, and disoriented and hurt and everything, and that she wanted to like call out to them, but she couldn't even do that. She couldn't even open her mouth to drink and she couldn't even talk. The family said that when they took Holly to the hospital, she was diagnosed with a concussion and she was treated for foot injuries due to the cold. She was also treated for famine and dehydration. They said that Holly had lost 15 pounds and her kidneys were beginning to shut down and that the doctor said that she would have died in one or two days. They said that her potassium levels were extremely low and that the doctors were shocked. And the family was asked about the GoFundMe. Why did you start it at the date that you started it and everything like that and this is what the sister had to say. Friends and family kept asking her how they could help, what they could do, and that things were getting expensive. I figured it was the most public way for everyone to see where the money was going. The donations were mostly personal friends and family. She said that in the beginning, it was just friends and family that were donating, but that when the case started getting more public attention, that's when all the donations started piling in and that she, she really didn't have any control over how much money the GoFundMe raised. The sister also admitted, you know, how crazy it all sounds and she said she was definitely having a mental breakdown. She told us later she was seeking a total disconnect from everything. She really just wanted to be alone. She had no idea it would turn into anything it would turn into or the worry she would cause or what it would become. And then, the family was not happy with Sergeant Darrell. The sheriff sergeant has made it 10 times worse for Kaylee. Kaylee is Holly's daughter. She's the one who said the whole water source thing, which is what really started everything, right? I've never even seen him or met him. This is someone who looked at some paperwork and looked at things on paper. He wasn't there. I think it might be easy to look at a few things on paper and make conclusions. She said that the sergeant has taken something and blown it out of proportion and the attention has gone to him. She said, we never said she drank the water. He made it look like there's a hole in the story and there wasn't. There are not holes in the story. There are no discrepancies. It just got blown very out of proportion. She then ended it by saying she thinks that her sister has learned her lesson and that after she got that initial medical treatment for her physical uh, you know, problems, they then put her into a, like a mental health wellness center and she's getting treated for that. Her sister also said she has definitely been through some trauma over the past several years. I don't think she's properly dealt with it and gotten the proper help for it and now is the time. She's getting better every day. And now let's get into the theories. There really are two major theories here. You've got, is this a GoFundMe scam theory? And then the other theory is this is just a miraculous recovery. She managed to survive against all odds. It's a miracle. And I wanna flesh out both of those theories so that you guys can decide for yourself. And let me know what you think, cause I'm very, very curious. It's on Facebook where everything is so loving and <laughs> so kind on Facebook. But they're basically the family had to like shut down their Facebook, change their phone numbers. They're getting so much hate and people on Facebook are calling them 
scammers, crazy things that I can't even say on here without getting demonetized. Remember how I told you that there was a section in the GoFundMe where the sister says, when Holly is found. We are in immediate need of funds to help cover the costs of her search and possible aftercare when she is found. This is what people are holding on to and saying, why didn't she say if Holly is found? Her saying when Holly is found is like a slip, like a Freudian slip, and that they knew that she was going to be found because she wasn't really missing in the first place. She was confronted with that whole when, if thing, and this is what the sister said to explain that. She was in tears, okay, so that, I mean, I think that's important to note here, and she said, remember, in tears, it was just for me, a sister who couldn't stand if her sister wasn't found. I could never stand that if she wasn't found, she said. Kind of understandable. So she came out and said, you know what? I just want to be honest. And this is what she said. She said, she wrote this on the GoFundMe. We acknowledge and respect people's concerns over the many inaccuracies portrayed by the press and social media regarding Holly's ordeal. Whoever has concerns about our use of their donation is welcome to request a refund without any objection from the family. We are honest people. We're not holding your money hostage. The sister had said that only $50 had been requested to be refunded from the GoFundMe. So that's everything regarding the GoFundMe scam theory. Now I want to talk about the miraculous survival theory. Part of Proving this theory was the family trying to say two things. First is, you know, how much experience Holly had with hiking and fasting and all that kind of stuff. And that, you know, like if anybody was going to survive something like this, it would be someone like Holly. And then the other thing that they do really harp on is just how bad her condition was because that gives credibility to the fact that, you know, something was really wrong with her and she had managed to survive it and it was a miracle. In addition to how tired she was and how she had to take a break like every five feet when she was being rescued, they also said that once they were home and they were like sorting through her stuff and things like that, that Holly could not even stand up. She was sitting down the whole time. She couldn't even stand. They also are citing the medical professionals who said that Holly had a concussion, said that her kidneys were shutting down and she was two days away from death and how she had been suffering from famine and dehydration and all of that. And then they said that, I think she was just seeking solitude. And then a number of choices just went horribly wrong. I think she thought she could go in there, spend a couple of days alone, fast and pray, and then come out of the park. We'll be the first to tell you that it's not normal to walk into a park without a cell phone and maybe with no food or water. That's not a normal thing to do. I don't think her head was in the right place when she did that. There's also an official report about the search itself that is due to come out pretty much at any moment. And that is gonna detail how much taxpayer money was used as well as the staff and the volunteers because that's another aspect of this, of the people who think it's fake and they're upset because of obviously the taxpayer money because this was a huge effort. And then on top of that, when I was doing research on Sergeant Darrell, I found some articles of him basically saying that there's this huge issue that's going on in the area where they're basically having search and rescue like fatigue with the volunteers and stuff because there's like a call every day for a search and rescue and when the rumors have come out based on what he said that people were saying that this was potentially a fake missing persons thing that they're actually having a hard time getting volunteers and stuff because people are like are these people really missing like is it worth it blah 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 i just thought that was important to know because it was just like an interesting thing about what's going on and maybe why Sergeant Daryl was a bit suspicious because, you know, on the back end, he's dealing with this fatigue and all these searches. And then there's inconsistencies in the stories. And he's like, is this fake? Are you guys wasting our resources? You know, that's just my conspiracy. Allegedly, don't sue me. Let me tell you guys what I think. And then I will also want to know what you guys think. So what I think is that Holly maybe did not want to be found. And that could explain why maybe she was not seen when people think she should have been seen. Um, 
also if she hit her head and was disoriented and dehydrated and hungry she could not have just been like not in her right frame of mind which clearly doesn't seem like she was in her right frame of mind before she even went on this trip so if you're already a little bit not thinking clearly and then you're like starving and thirsty and you get hit in the head and I, I mean come on it's pretty much believable that she was a little bit off in her thinking and so if there was odd behaviors I think that that is understandable regarding the family maybe the daughter didn't really understand what she was saying when she said water source and that you know maybe she didn't necessarily mean that she was drinking May, you know I don't know the whole wetting the water thing I'm not sure if putting it in your mouth and spitting it out if you can still get sick because I know when you travel to certain countries they tell you not even to brush your teeth with the tap water and to use bottled water because there's like parasites and stuff so I'm not sure I don't know if if she could have still gotten those parasites just from rinsing her mouth out I don't see how she could have survived 12 days without any water I don't know the point is what do I think I don't know I I don't know I'm leaning towards this was just a horrible thing that went awry I I really don't want to believe it's a a GoFundMe scam I don't know I just if it is it's not the smartest idea at all I would love to know what do you guys think if anybody knows about like like the the health or medical side of this about going without water about whether fasting helps you go even longer than the average person without water and anything i would just love to know what you guys think please let me know in the comments below thank you guys so much for watching please subscribe if you haven't already and i will see you guys in the next one bye